Illustrative example one covers some of the questions you might expect from a standard costing question. So let's look at the required first. So draft a budgeted statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income based on the standards provided. So assume actual volumes and budgeted volumes are identical. So the reason why they tell you this, to assume the actual and budgeted volumes are identical, is that if they don't tell you that, then budgeted profit would be based on budgeted volumes. And that makes sense. But they could also have asked you to calculate standard profit. And if they ask you for standard profit, that's not the same as budget profit. Standard profit is our flexible budget. So that uses the standards provided, but actual volumes. So just know about the difference. But in most questions at this level, uh, the actual volumes and the budget volumes will be the same. So our flexible budget will basically be the same as our original budget. So let's do part A first. So let's have a look. So there we have that. So I'm just going to scan through the information. <clears throat> so Fatties and Thinnies manufactures a single product, a ready-made lasagna, which can feed six people. So then they give you the standard cost per unit. So just always watch out when they give you costs or a, a table or information. Is it per unit or in total or some other measure? So all of these costs here on the right hand side is per unit. So we've got direct materials, direct labor, variable manufacturing overheads, and then variable selling and distribution costs. So, and then at the bottom there in bold, we have the standard selling price per unit. So we can see there's only variable costs here. Um, the only thing we're missing here is fixed costs. And they, it's, it's possible, unlikely, but it's possible that there are no fixed costs. Then they give us actual results for fatties and thinnies. So again, material, labor, variable manufacturing overheads, variable selling costs, and then sales. And then at the bottom, they give us the units information. So units manufactured and completed, 5,000. Units sold, 5,000. So there's no opening or closing inventory, no opening or closing work in process. Oh, there they give us that information. So no inventory on hand at the beginning or the end of the period. And then they give us some fixed costs. So they do give us fixed costs. And they give us the actual fixed cost and then in brackets the budgeted. And then fixed admin costs uh, was 32,000, which was in line with the budget. So that's all the information. So now let's prepare the budgeted profit or the income statement for the budgeted profit. So we'll start with the unit sold and multiplied by the selling price. And remember, this is budgeted profit, so we'll have to use the standard selling price. So that's this is the standard selling price per unit, and this would be budgeted sales units. Then our variable cost would be based on budgeted production, so that's important. So all the units here is budgeted production. If we were to calculate the standard profit, this would have been actual units produced. But since this is the budgeted profit, we use budgeted um, units. They are the same, but I'm just making sure that you get the right, use the right values. And then these would be our standard costs per unit. So they come from the standard cost card. So if we scroll up here, you'll see this, the standard costs. And our variable costs, so we multiply by the units. And then that'll give us our variable cost of sales or variable manufacturing costs. And we have to deduct our other variable costs. So that was our variable sales and distribution costs, also from the standard cost card. So again, standard cost per unit. And that gives us our contribution. So once we've deducted uh, our cost of sales and our variable sales and distribution costs. Then we still need to deduct our fixed costs. And remember, it's budgeted fixed costs. So that was at the bottom here. The budgeted manufacturing costs is in brackets. And then the 32000 for admin expenses was in line with the budget. So the thirty two would be our budget then. And that'll give us our net profit. And that'll be net or budgeted net profit. Okay, so something else to mention here. They didn't say whether we're using a variable costing system or absorption costing system. So when you need to prepare an income statement, you need to know which one we're using. So here we, we just assumed it's a variable costing income statement. And the reason probably for that was they should have actually stated that in the question 
But the reason is um, standard costing at this level, <coughs> we've only dealt with um, in terms of variable costing, not absorption costing. So we haven't dealt with allocating of fixed manufacturing overheads. So that's probably why they just assumed it's a variable costing income statement or direct costing or marginal costing income statement. So the next question asked for draft a statement. So there is a typing error, a big one. Statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive based on the actual results. So that's our actual profit calculation. So we'll do the variable costing income statement again. That's what in, what's in the solution. So this time we use actual sales, which is the same as budget, but remember it needs to be actual sales, um, the units. <clears throat> so let's just go back to the information. Do they give us an actual selling price? No, they don't, but they do give us the sales value. So we don't have to calculate anything. We just use it as it is. It's, it's a given. So you can see that it's given information. Then less variable manufacturing costs or cost of sales. So again, we need to use the actual units produced this time. So actual units produced times the actual price per unit. So do they give us the actual price per unit? So for material, they say we purchased and consumed. So there's no inventory left of material. That's important to know. Otherwise, we have to deduct the closing inventory. So purchased and consumed. 10,000 kilograms at 22.50 per kilogram. So remember, it's per kilogram, not per unit. So we can't multiply this by the units. That would be wrong. So, uh, but we use 10,000 kilograms at 22.50, so we can just multiply that, and that would be the total cost. We don't have to do it per unit, because that would, that would be additional calculations that's not necessary. Same with direct labor, they gave us the hours and then rate per hour. So we can just multiply the actual hours spent, so actual quantity, times the actual price. And that's what we did for material as well, actual quantity times actual price to get the actual expense or the actual um, value. Then variable manufacturing overheads was given, 25,000. And the same with variable sales and distribution costs, just the given information. So then we can calculate actual contribution. So that's our sales less all our variable costs. So that's all our variable costs. There's no variable costs that we forgot. And then we still need to deduct our fixed costs. That was given here at the bottom. So fixed manufacturing overheads, 40,400. That's the actual. And then admin and admin overheads 32,000. So that will give us our actual net profit. And you can see it's different from a budgeted net profit. So there will be some variances and that's what we'll need to calculate next.